Well, hello, everybody. It's Eddie. Glad you are with us for this uh, short training presentation. We are honored today to have my long friend and a guy that I absolutely really respect is knowing as much about business entities related to real estate and notes as I believe probably anybody alive. So with that being said, I want to welcome you, Dykes Bodiford. Thank you, Eddie, for having me on today. Well, we, we know you, you are gracious enough to come do this uh, one-day class, and, and the money that, that uh, the folks are paying for this class goes to a, a really a great cause, which is the Montague County Child Welfare Board. And a lot of our note school people know the story behind that, but uh, we wanted it to have two dimensions. And, and uh, in fact, I called your two of your buddies, and, and both of which suggested that we call you and specifically get you to teach this class, and that was Jeff Watson and, and Walter Wolford. So uh, we know we're Thank in you. good hands in their recommendation that both of them have, have attended this class. And so you were gracious enough to come do this and, uh, and, and uh, make a great deal for, for the charity. Uh, but the information that we're going to cover that day is phenomenal, and we just thought we'd do a quick little training session and let you kind of describe to us what that looked look like. Sure, sure. I want to talk a little bit about what I will be talking about that day. We'll be going uh, for most of the day, and uh, I'll be around for questions and answers uh, as well uh, after it's over. So uh, what we're going to be talking about then is asset protection and minimizing taxes. Uh, protection of assets uh, without uh, understanding the tax ramifications can put you in a bind so that Uncle Sam actually gets a good chunk of uh, what you have. So we want to protect our assets not only from creditors but uh, from the IRS as well. So let's get going here. Now a lot of you are going to say that you have insurance and you have nothing to hide. So why do you need asset protection? Well, I'll tell you, good insurance is always, always the first line of defense. The best attorneys out there in the country are on retainer by the insurance company. So always get good insurance and make sure that that is your first line of defense. But now it's not going to cover all problems. There's a couple of examples I wanted to give you. One is where your a judgment that's rendered against you might be greater than the insurance coverage that you have. You never know how much that might be. There might also be a situation that's not covered by insurance at all, such as Fred Sandwich land contracts. In this case, a new investor in Ohio uh, bought a property on land contract, turned around and resold the property on land contract to his ultimate buyer. The buyer would, had excellent credit. His only issue was he was new to the area, and most lenders don't like loaning uh, making loans to someone that's new to an area. They want someone to be in the area for at least a year before they make the loan. So the buyer enjoyed the house, decided that eventually he wanted to make an addition to the house, so why not go ahead and do it now so that when he did get his mortgage in, in, at the one-year point, he could get a larger mortgage and not have to worry about refinancing later. So he added a $40,000 addition to the house. Well, Fred thought this was great. It, it upped the value of the house for the buyer. The more likely he's going to get a good appraisal and, and buy out. Fred had a good profit built in between the two. So the buyer notified Fred at the end of the year that he had his 45-day commitment from the, uh, from the lender to uh, buy the property. So Fred is all excited. He sets up closing to sell. He turns around. He calls his, his uh, original seller, and he says, Mr. Seller, we want you to transfer title. I'm going to pay you off on such and such a date. We're doing a double closing. And the seller said, you know, I've been by that house. It's worth a whole lot more now than when I contract with you. So I think uh, I need more money out of the deal. Well, Fred, uh, the, the seller wanted a lot more than Fred was even going to make in the deal. So, uh, so Fred was not able to get title to pass to his buyer. His buyer uh, lost his, his contract with the lender to get, uh, get financing, and so therefore he sued Fred. Fred had to sue the seller to try to force performance and probably will eventually get the seller to, to transfer the property. But in the meantime, his buyer is in uh, litigation with him, and not only that, the buyer called a local TV um, uh, station and the consumer reporter and a cameraman have been following Fred around 
uh, asking him why he's scamming homeowners. It's, it's a situation that Fred, doing everything in his own name, could have avoided. Now, it, it's, he's not going to be able to force the seller in a situation like this uh, to go ahead and transfer title by using entities, but at least Fred's name wouldn't be slathered all over the paper and the TV station. So also, if you have full or part-time employees in your business, are you their employer or is your corporation or LLC their employer? That can make a difference if they have uh, a situation that they think was un, uh, uncalled for, such as you firing them for no cause, and they want to sue their employer. You don't want to be the personally sued. You want the entity to be sued. Same thing with contractors. If you had a conflict with a contractor, contractor decides to sue. Well, who contracted with the contractor? You are your business. Uh, this is an item that uh, insurance would not cover at all, but the entities would certainly help you. Now let's talk about what all you might own. Obviously, most of you own notes and mortgages. It might be discounted notes and mortgages that you purchased. It might be loans that you have made. Those are assets. Those have a significant amount of value. If they're in your own name, that's, that can be OK, except for the fact that you are not maintaining a low profile. You also may own several investment properties. You may own um, a sole proprietorship business. Now, the sole proprietorship business is the one that can bring the most liability from employees, from clients, from the general public that the business deals with. And a sole proprietorship business is defined as one where all the income and expenses are placed on Schedule C of your personal tax return. So that's where the first liability can come. There's no liability shield, so it comes up to you and the judgment gets uh, in your name. The second source of liability in this diagram that we have is liability that might come from rental properties. A tenant slips and falls, or a uh, pipe bursts and uh, um, destroys um, assets that the, that the tenant has in the unit, such as his beds, couch, chairs, tables, whatever. And he thinks that you should be paying for it, and he may want to uh, force that liability against you by suing you. If the properties are in your name, you are on the hook for that. Now, from the note side, there's not a whole lot of liability. So that's OK uh, to not worry about having those in an entity for the purposes of liability. But for the purposes of maintaining a low profile, you may also want that to be uh, in an entity as well. Then lastly, there's liability that you create yourself. You might be driving and hitting the contingency fee attorney in the crosswalk. Well, no matter who owns the vehicle, you're the one that was driving, and therefore, you're going to be named in the lawsuit. Not a lot that you can do about uh, those types of liabilities, but once that judgment has gotten against you, do you realize that everything that you have, everything, the notes, the mortgages, the business, the rental properties are all subject to any judgment that that, um, that person may get against you because uh, everything is in your own name. Everything is personally owned. So we're going to talk about entities that you might use to own these different assets, not only for the purpose of asset protection, but for uh, tax purposes as well. One thing you want to do is discourage litigation. Obviously, you want to maintain a low profile. I equate that to the roach in the uh, cracks as opposed to the elephant in the room. You want to be hidden. And we'll talk about how entities can do that for you. So that if an asset search is done, will they find substantial and easily reachable assets? Or will they not find anything, even though they know that you must own significant assets, which would make the uh, litigation costly, both in time and in money, and maybe discourage the litigation in the first place. If uh, someone wants to sue you and they go down to the courthouse to look up what you have to see if you have significant assets, you don't want them to, to find anything uh, or very little, so that they may be even discouraged from even starting a case. Now, the strategies that we will talk about are mostly available when there's no threats on the horizon. Once you're under a threat of litigation or in litigation, the strategies become severely limited, and there are very few strategies available once the judgment has been issued. 
So remember, the longer you have a plan in place, the better it will withstand an attack. And I can't emphasize that enough. Courts typically try to get through entities that were just set up in the last few months, maybe uh, during the time that the threat of litigation was out there. But they are very seldom uh, wanting to pierce the veils of entities that have set up years and years ago. So the sooner you put a good asset protection plan in place, the better off you are. So where will your assets go? Now, right now, you may have everything in a sole proprietorship, uh, or maybe you have a partner, which might even be your spouse, and you have it in a general partnership. But we will talk about using S corporations, C corporations, limited partnerships, limited liability companies, which I think are great. They have a, they serve a lot of purposes, which we'll talk about both the single member LLC and the multi member LLC. Then there's something called the limited liability partnership and the limited liability limited partnership. Won't use those too often, but we'll touch on when those might be used uh, in some states. And of course, what is the value of the land trust? Always remember the land trust does not have a liability shield mandated under state law to protect assets, but it does give some anonymity and provides another hurdle for someone to try to get through to get to your assets. And of course, there's a personal property trust, and then there's uh, several other trusts, which we will touch on. In order to decide what entities to use and how to use them, you need to understand what kind of income is generated by real estate entrepreneurs. The first is business income. That's like flipping property or, or brokering uh, notes. Uh, that's considered active income. Usually that's where services or uh, inventory is the generator of income. Then there's investment income, uh, what is rephrased as passive income. And that would be like rental properties uh, that you might hold. And then, of course, the note investor generates portfolio income. If you're not in the business of trading notes, uh, then this is portfolio income. We'll talk about where that should be held. And the tax considerations for all three of these, why different entities provide different tax results. So, Eddie, that's kind of a quick overview of what all we're going to be talking about. Well, it's a it's a mountain, and and uh, and and I'm very excited. I will tell you this personally, Dykes, that you know we've had you know family business in the note space. Both my my family, my wife's family, uh, my wife and I's business and related businesses, and I don't know how many entities we've done, but I would say maybe over a hundred at least. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say that some of the things that you mentioned here in just this little short session that we've not ever done. Now, now I didn't mean yeah, I've done a lot of some. I tell you, Eddie, periodically you need to look at where you are, what your business situation is, what your investments are, because you're constantly evolving and moving out of one space and into another space, and entities that might need to be closed down or opened up. Once you understand the purpose of the entities, it makes it a lot easier for you to make those decisions. And like you, over the years, I've closed down entities, I've opened up new entities, and once a year, for and it doesn't really take but about 30 minutes or so, I kind of go through everything that I'm doing and saying, is it properly held or should I make some changes? And it seems like uh, you know about every other year I'm closing something down or opening a new entity in order to get uh, better uh, protection and to get better tax results. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And the tax ramifications of these businesses is huge. So uh, anyway, I don't I don't think we could have picked a better subject or certainly couldn't have picked a better teacher to to do this. Um, I, I will tell you that our staff will be there with uh, pen and pad in hand uh, as students, just like the rest of the note school folks, because Great. certain you're going to point out some things that uh, that we're probably going to go back and change about our business. And we, we really, truly look forward to, you know, for your making us think, because this is uh, this is something you spent a lot of time and energy learning. And uh, it, it, you did it for your own personal reasons, but it darn sure has great reasons for everybody else in the space. That's, that is true. Um, I'm not going to talk about anything that I really hadn't done in the past. And over my 35 years, or 36 years now being in, in real estate investing, uh, I've 
done notes and mortgages and lending and, and flipping property and holding long-term rental property, developing, building. So I've touched on most of the areas of real estate that's out there and uh, had to think through what kind of entities make most sense in this area. Yeah. Dykes, we really appreciate it. We uh, we are so looking forward to seeing you. Uh, you guys have the dates on the class. I know it's going to be June the 2nd. And there is a tab on your summer summit, um, noteschool.com uh, forward slash summer summit. There's a tab for the Dykes class. And uh, we are, Dykes, we're looking forward to seeing you there. And I know you probably saw our little video of uh, taking everybody to the stockyards and have a little fun that night. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, sounds good. So hope I'm hoping to be able to make that. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to have some barbecue for you if you do. I love good barbecue. Texas barbecue, some of the best. Yeah. All right. Well, Dykes, we will look forward to seeing you on June the 2nd for this class, and we appreciate your little uh, uh, summary of uh, the, all the areas that we're going to talk about. We'll see you then. Thank you, Eddie. Yes, sir. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.